Good morning. How is everyone? Today is Thursday. <laughs> have to do that these days because things are getting so busy. I'm like, okay, well, what is today? What do I got to do today? Lots. <laughs> I know that much. So if you guys are ready to pop on and have a little meditation, I can't stand the glasses. <coughs> Excuse me. Not enough fluid. <laughs> it's been busy this morning. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, Geraldine. <laughs> you caught me getting a drink. Good morning, good morning. My hair's a disaster. Check that. Oh, it's still a mess. <laughs> it's um, It's been a very busy morning after not much sleep. There is, it's very distracting. I may have to put the blinds down. There's a robin in this neighborhood that whenever there's certain cars in certain spots, it tries, it tries frantically to get into the windows and it just makes a mess all down the side of the cars. And right across the street, there's a pickup truck and it's trying so hard to get, why do, if anybody knows the answer to that question, it's been bothering me for a while. Why do robins try so, he's trying on the other car too. They're going to come out to find their cars and it's going to be all white poop all down the side because it happens to Jim's. He doesn't, it doesn't bother my red car. It doesn't mind that car. But anybody else's cars around here, I watched that Robin trying to get inside the car. It's so funny. Here we are again, Wendy. Here we are. Wendy, I got such a beautiful package. Let me see if you can see how cool this thing is. Look at that. Right on the ceiling fan, it just, it just, check it out, you guys. Is that not the coolest thing? That is so beautiful. It makes me so happy. So thank you so much for that, Wendy. Wendy's watching. Hello, Scarlett. Thank you for popping in. Scarlett says hi to Geraldine. <sighs> My hair looks great. Mm, I don't know. I just, I just, I just threw myself together <laughs> like five minutes ago. It's, it's almost the, the whole process of coffee and conversation lately, the way you guys started with not with just wearing your pajamas on camera. I almost barely get dressed in the morning these days. There's so much, I, instead of just doing what I need to do, I uh, do everything else. And the doggie hasn't even had a walk yet. That's all right, she's lazy in the morning with Caroline here. It's okay. Hi, Laura. <laughs> so... I'm going to work on stepping aside a little bit. I need that. I need some quiet time. I need to say, it's okay. There's a lot going on in the world. There's a lot going on in my world. It's very busy and it's okay because it's another day and it's going to, it's going to be beautiful. Sorry, there's too much going on outside. Stop it. Stop being such a distractible little person. Hi, Sharon Boyle. Howdy doody time. I feel it today. Howdy doody time. Who else? Let me ask a question. Who else is getting, gets, like, we all get our messages in different ways from spirits. Some of you say you get these numbers all the time. Um, you all have different ways. And I think my way, Steve especially does this, and it drives me crazy. I was doing the bunny hop all day yesterday. I was ready to lose my mind. I could not get that song out of my head, no matter how hard I tried. I, it was like, dun, 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 and I'm like, stop it. <laughs> I was singing it all day. What is it with you? Deborah Snow, did you find us? You found us? I don't know what she's talking about, Wendy. <laughs> Deborah Snow Sill, you're here. She's here somewhere. <laughs> so hot today. You can't decide what, what to do, so here I am. Oh, okay. Well, good. Sharon, you decided on this. That's a great decision. <laughs> Thank you. Um... So this morning I woke up with never be enough from the greatest showman. It will not stop. And the only part of the song it, that's going through my head is the never, 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 never. <laughs> it's, I, I, I like want to turn off all music and stay completely away from music for a little while. So I'll stop waking up with all these crazy things in my head. But you know... I haven't done the bunny hop since I was like 10 years old, so that has nothing to do with anything that I've heard that is literally Steve. I laugh. I laughed all day yesterday, and I could see him laughing too. He's like, you know, he's having so much fun with it. He's not taking it out of my head because it's so funny watching me lose my mind. And I, and I literally, I asked him a number of times, like, Steve, please stop singing that song. Please stop doing the bunny hop. <laughs> and I can, I can hear him laughing in that crazy laugh. Nope, love all, ooh, guess what? I just got it. 
when <laughs> he was in physical form. I hate to have my feet touched. I hate it when people mess with my feet. I cannot stand to be tickled. They're so sensitive. I cannot stand it. It makes me crazy. And he would do the craziest thing all the time just to make, he would do anything to make me laugh. If I was getting, things were getting too serious, he would pretend that I had toe fuzzies and he would start messing with my feet. And he thought it was hilarious. And I said, why do you do that all the time? And he said, because I love to see you laugh. I'm like, oh, maybe we could find another way to laugh. So guess what he's done? He puts a crazy song in my head and I'm losing my mind and I'm laughing about it. And he thinks that's really funny because that's his personality. He's showing us. We were talking yesterday, I think it was. I know it was yesterday. We were talking about personalities and we're talking about... He's making it clear. We were talking about how after we pass, after our loved ones pass, that that a part of them still holds that personality that they had when they were here on the planet. And so he's making it very clear that he's a jokester. Like, you're right, sister, you're right. He's like, you're right, yes. I have kept my personality, I'm still a jokester. <laughs> and he's playing with me. Uh, hold on, we got stuff going on. You guys are really busy. I kind of fixed these glasses. Maybe I won't break them again. Yeah, Wendy, I think it might have something to do to you, with you too, the bunny hop. I keep thinking maybe there's something for Wendy there. Um, Cheryl Ann, she says she's gifting you too. Did you see that? Wow, you guys have been so busy. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Deborah Snow Cell. Sharon says, hi, Gerald. Hi, Wendy. Hi, anyone else? And I can hear that in your voice. <laughs> You're always bouncy whenever we see you. Uh, Laura, she gets messages from hearing them and seeing them and songs. Yeah. Yeah, isn't that cool? Our, our angels, our guides, our loved ones, they find ways to let us know that they're still around. Annie, my son listens to the bunny hop song. Does it make you crazy? Does it get in your head? <laughs> Can you never get it back out again? What I got on me? Is it just me? Sometimes there's weird reflections. I'm sorry. <laughs> Kamal, hello from Pakistan. I'm probably, I'm probably murdering your name. I'm probably saying it completely wrong in Pakistan, but that's how I am in my little English speech. <laughs> it's nice to see you. Laura gets songs all the time, too. Lauren Riley, thank you for popping in. Hello, hello. Sharon, I didn't play it as I didn't want to interrupt my internal chanting. That kind of stuff. You, I, I totally get it. I totally get it. Don't play the bunny song. Don't, don't do it. If you got something going on that's powerful inside of you, do not play the bunny song. <laughs> Charlie, thank you for popping in. Carol Allen, thank you for being here. Lauren keeps hearing the oldie song, No Exception to the Rule. Mm, that sounds like a good message, message song. There must be something in there for you. Charles says hi to everyone. <sighs> yeah, maybe, Wendy, maybe my rabbit inspired you too. Merlin hopped into my heart. Merlin hopped into mine, apparently, because he's <laughs> I'm getting the bunny song message. Sharon, I will brave myself for it. What time is it good to listen to it? To the bunny hop? Never. There's never a good time. Sharon, I'm telling you right now. <laughs> I posted it because it was funny, but if you don't want it stuck in your head, you don't want to play that song. Lauren, everybody plays the fool sometimes. Exactly. That's a good song, isn't it? Hey there. Let's see. Good morning, Catherine Kovacs. How are you? Well, Sharon, Wendy says she avoided it. I can't have anything stuck in my head. It is very addictive. So, <laughs> I got to find something good to replace it with. Something that, <laughs> I got to listen to a bunch of music so I can get something that I really enjoy stuck in my head. Yep, Sharon, I kicked him a couple of times. I always warn people, if they tickle my feet, they may lose teeth. And it's not that I, I'm a nice person. I don't want to hurt anyone. So that's why I warn in advance. I do not have any control over that reaction. I don't, I can't, I don't like to be tickled. Foot rub? Okay, you want a good foot? Go, go ahead, good foot rub. No tickle. 
Let's see. Terrell Ann saying hi to everyone. Charles, Catherine, all of you. Let's see. I love the way you guys are interacting with each other. Wendy, my energy is bright as the sun today. That's, that's really good stuff. Deborah, thank you for popping in. Good morning. I woke up with Wicked Game in my head. No, I don't want to fall in love with you. <laughs> What's that all about? Did you hear it? Or is it giving you a message? We were at 11. That number bounces around, doesn't it? Hi, Julie Kiss. How is everyone? I missed everything this morning. I literally... <sighs> Jim doesn't sleep. He doesn't sleep. I did a session on him in, in the wee hours because he wouldn't sleep. And I was like, I gotta sleep. I gotta sleep. So finally I just did a little session. I don't even think he knew I was doing it. <laughs> I rubbed some, some oil, some lavender, and <sighs> some other kind of oil on his back. And I was like, go to sleep. Please go to sleep. I'm like with a baby. Please sleep. So at 5 o'clock in the morning, I, I look and I'm like, oh, I haven't slept <laughs> at 5 o'clock in the morning. And I felt an energy draw. So whatever he needed, he got at 5 o'clock in the morning. He went to sleep, slept like a baby. I wish I'd have done it at 1 o'clock in the morning. We, we both would have gotten some sleep. The theme song of the Andy Griffith show always pops into my head. Oh, God. Deborah, <laughs> I asked, didn't I? I started this. That song gets in my head, too. I whistle it. Oh, good, Sharon. Never to my own comment. Good. Don't listen to the bunny hop. Hair play. Hair play. Hair play, is, a, is there a song, hair play? Is there a group, hair play? Because when you say that, the thing, hair play, reminds me that Steve plays with my hair often. Our angels do that, too. You ever, like, you're sitting there and you're like, they're, like, playing with my hair. I can feel it. Stop messing with my hair. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Lauren Riley. Well, no, I have held my own ear as a baby and still do every night. <laughs> Must be. You guys know that song. I don't. <laughs> I'm not even going to listen to it. It'll be stuck. All right, you guys. <clears throat> Big stuff going on. Who's feeling it? Who's feeling a lot of growth? Who's feeling the um, <sighs> the break is over? <laughs> I'm going to write my own song. The break is over. We had, we had a downtime to redirect us. I'm hearing it from so many people that they're thinking that they got to go back to work now, that everything's going to go back to normal. And Spirit just keeps giving me the, no, it's mm. not. It really isn't. It's under the surface. There's something very different. Mm. It's not the same as it was. We didn't come out of it exactly the same. We came out of it very different. And I believe mm. that we're going to continue. It's going to continue to unfold. So the encouragement this morning is as my ego steps aside... <laughs> Yes, that guy's looking at me. Stop looking at me. <laughs> My encouragement this morning is to spend some time, really spend some time within yourself as much as you can, seeking guidance from your own Holy Spirit higher self, seeking gui guidance from your team, from your spirit guides, from your angels, because if you're feeling like, yeah, everything's coming back to life, and I'm supposed to go back to work, and then I'm just really not feeling it. I feel like there's something I'm supposed to be doing different. Now's the time. Now's the time when the energy is so giving and so um, powerful that if you have a dream, that you've always had a dream. A year ago, I had a dream of something. I knew that I was supposed to be doing something big, and I... I couldn't put it together. I see. I always see things a year in advance oftentimes. I don't think we're getting a year anymore. <laughs> I think we're moving into the energy of we see it and it happens now. But I saw something clearly. And I started trying to pull it together a year ago. And it just, I couldn't, I couldn't make it happen. I had too much up in the air. I didn't have the right space. And then as I think about my past year, I have been slowly building something and getting myself without even knowing why. I knew that there was some changes that I needed to make so mm -hmm. that something could happen and I wasn't fully sure what it was. And so now I'm as it's as it's unfolding, I'm like, oh right, we were supposed to do this. It didn't go away. It was just waiting for the right time. So my encouragement to you is is what do you have? Do you, have you had some things like a year ago, two years ago, five years ago, where you were like, I'm supposed to be doing this. I'm supposed to be having Four years ago, I was pretty sure I was going to have a healing center in the mountains. Well, I'm in the mountains now. A year ago, I'm going to give you. I'm going to drop you a hint as to what we're working on right now. A year ago, I had 
a very clear vision that I was supposed to be building um, an academy, a different kind of academy, an academy that was for spiritual learning, that was for spiritual growth, that was a place where people could come who were waking up all over the planet, they were waking up like I did, and went, what in the world, what do I, why am I feeling all this energy in my heart space, what am I? And I started reading about, you know, highly sensitive people and then empaths. And there was a few places that I could go to to try to pick up some of that information. And I'm a self-learner, so it was okay with me. I was like, I'll just, I'll keep learning. It took me years. It literally has taken me years to figure out. And I'm still, I'm still learning who I am, what I am. I, and that may be a lifelong thing. But what if we have a an academy that we can go to that has offerings of classes where you can go when you're suddenly waking up or when you want to do when you're feeling the push when spirit's saying I want you to do this I want you to do that and you're like I got no idea how to make that happen and then an academy shows up <laughs> that has classes that offers cl classes for exactly what it is that spirit's trying to lead you to do so you can go to that academy and you're gonna find people that are gonna listen to you and they're gonna help you along the way that's what it's all about. This is it's different from anything else that's out there. I can tell you that much. I don't have all the details yet. I'm really just honestly letting it unfold. But it will be it will be a part of EWN, just so you know. So it's gonna it's gonna be big and it's gonna be powerful. And I'm just stepping out of the way and allowing it to happen. So there's your big surprise, Wendy. You wanted me to tell you that's what's going on right now. You got Mm -hmm. It's back so far, I can't remember where I left off. Why do the angels play with their hair? Wait, somebody, where's that whole question? Why do they, when they have the most gorgeous hair? I don't think they're playing with their hair because they think it's cool. I think maybe they're playing with their hair because they're like... Okay, first off, angels don't really, don't really look like what we think they look like. <laughs> I don't want to burst any bubbles. Angels don't really have, they will, they can take on a physical form. They can appear to us as we want them to appear, as we, as we are visualizing them. They come to us in the way that we're able to receive. So does God, source energy, universal oneness. It's not that they have, they actually have that form. They're not physical, so they don't really look like us. They're actually this bundle of energy that, is probably magnificent. I'm sure it's magnificent. <laughs> it's incredible. Those who have actually gotten a glimpse of this, they, they, I, I've heard them talk about it. So they will take on that form to help us to relate better to them. So yes, in that way, I guess you would see hair. Um, typically when you see, if you're having a vision of a clear image come down at you, I've had that happen curly, blonde, curly, beautiful, beautiful hair, big blue eyes. The hair was like shoulder length and it was just full and it was curly. And I was like, who is that? That typically is an ascended master. An ascended master is like Jesus. It's like someone who has come to the earth, been in physical form, and then was taken up, was lifted, or is, and is still doing their work, just not in that physical form anymore. Does that make sense? So they have... They still, you can still see them as they work on the earth. They may have been more enhanced, but they have that physical form. At least that's how it was explained to me. <laughs> so I thought it was an angel for sure. Paul told me that it was likely an ascended master that was contacting me. So that's my understanding. I could be completely different from you. Then the second part of the question is why do they play with our hair? They're, they're, they're playing with our hair because they're trying to get our attention. They're trying to let us know they're there. It may not be angels, it could be loved ones who have passed who are trying to let you know, hey, I'm right here, they're touching your head. Um, so I think that it's more of a comfort. Sometimes maybe it's a grandma coming through. You know, they like to touch your hair, play with your hair. You know, my grandmother or my mother, you know, when I was little, they would run their fingers through the back of my hair or whatever, and it felt good. I think that's more probably what it is. That's my, that's my take on it. You guys might have a different take, that's okay. James Ingram. I have a brother-in-law named James Ingram. That's why it threw me, Deborah or Wendy, when you said that. <laughs> Africa by Toto. That's your song, huh? 
Uh, I've lost the rains down in Africa. It's a beautiful song, Lauren. Thank you. <laughs> Lauren, I love to play with hair. Yeah, hair is interesting. <laughs> it's a it's a pretty cool thing when we can when we've got some. <sighs> Carol says, I think the message is for me, love me. The message for me, love me. Yes, perfect. Love you. Love yourself first. Before anyone else, you got to take care of you. Why do angels? We did that. Yes, to get our attention, Wendy. Very good. That's what I was thinking too. Um... Lauren's buying herself a wardrobe, and she says that she wanted to dress more feminine since the style suits me well, and I wanted to be on a more regular basis. Very cool. You kind of feel like when you got to go live all the time with people, it's like, okay, now i got to have wardrobe. <laughs> uh, da -da -da -da. Yes, treating ourselves. Wendy's saying treating ourselves is good therapy. It's, it's like I love me enough to dress nicely, to, to be able to, to gift myself. When I was... Raising six kids, I rarely ever got myself anything. So now it's like, yeah, I can have that. And it also changes the energy, doesn't it? It's like we are so accustomed to scarcity. It's really hard to break that habit. If I buy this, I won't have it for that. If if I buy this, I'm taking it from someone else. That, that mentality is actually really, really faulty. It's actually not true. I know that we've been trained that way, so we always think that we have to live that way. It's good to be a good um, steward of your resources, showing the universe that you are taking good care of what you are being given. But it's also the second part of that is by enjoying what you're given, you actually receive more. You're actually, you go out and you buy. Here's the thing. If you go out and buy yourself some new clothes and you sit around going, uh, after you get them home, which I used to do all the time, then I sit around feeling guilty for buying myself something. I'm actually creating scarcity. When I go out and I buy myself a new shirt and I wear it and I'm like, woohoo, I like this. This looks good on me. I love the fact that I just bought myself something nice. It feels so good to treat myself to, I love myself so much. Of course, I deserve this gift. Of course, I deserve to have a nice, you know, these pretty clothes if I want them in my closet or, or you know, I'm going to buy myself a Starbucks or whatever and not feel guilty about it. The guilt actually pulls us into scarcity. We don't, we have been trained to do just exactly the opposite of what we're actually needing to do. If you want to get out of scarcity mode, you got to get yourself out of, if I buy this, I won't have it for that. If I do this, that person's going to go without. That kind of stuff is, is scarcity, and the universe is trying to show us how to exit that energy. When we get out of the energy of always thinking we're sacrificing or we're taking from someone else if we have, when we move out of that energy, we move into abundance mode, into receiving mode. You just put out there, oh, I'm getting a big push on that too. You put out there that I really, you know, I really kind of need this today. And then you let go. I'm learning it really well. And they're showing it to me in small bits and pieces. And and it's really great. It's like they're, they're proving to me, yes, you put it out there that you needed that. And then you stepped away from it. You didn't sit there and try to figure out how it was going to happen. You just stepped away. That's where we, the second part is that when we, we ask, we always receive someplace in the ethers. We have always received, and that is all there someplace. You have more in that, in that, you know, bank, wherever it is, you have more resources than you could ever, ever consider ever spending in many, many lifetimes, but you didn't get yourself in receiving mode. You forgot the second part. You asked, and then you tried to take it back. You're like, okay, well, I asked God for this, but basically you're saying, I don't really trust. <laughs> you know, like I asked for it, but now i got to figure out how it's going to happen. <laughs> the idea is ask and then trust that you're going to receive it in any way. It may not come in the way that you think. It may come in somebody gifting it to you. I have a hard time receiving. I have always been a giver. Most empaths are. We have a hard time stepping back and just receiving. So yesterday I had some things happen where I just had to say, hands off, hands off. You asked, you are receiving. Don't try to stop it. 
don't hold it back let the water flow <laughs> step back you asked and now you get to receive don't try to control it hi terry don't try to control when you've asked don't just let the universe work god whoever you call on let let that energy flow to you because the second you say i i would like to receive this it's already gone into yes mode because <laughs> you always get a yes and then you go, oh, but hold, hold on. Don't actually do that. I'm going to take that back, and I'm going to try to figure out how to make it happen. <laughs> I'm going to fix this toy myself. My toy is broken. I'm going to give it to Daddy. I want Daddy to fix it. The second Daddy gets out the tools to fix it, I'm like, no, hold on. I'm going to take it back, and I'm going to try to fix it myself. <laughs> how many times do we do that? It's true. I've done it most of my life. So I'm learning to just, like, I ask for it. I just trust I don't got to figure out where it's going to come from. I don't, I don't got to figure out how anything's going to happen. I just got to ask and then let go. How beautiful is that? Can you can you practice doing that? And when you do, start small. Don't go, well, I'm going to go in and win the Powerball <laughs> today. I've asked for the Powerball winning ticket today. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to get it and I'm going to win $10 million. No. <laughs> it's, Chances are you're not going to be able to, you are going to stop that from happening. You will not believe that you can win $10 million fully. And so you'll actually stop it. And then you'll be working against yourself. You're like, well, I asked God for the winning lottery ticket yesterday. I went and bought the ticket and it didn't win. So I guess I just, either I don't trust God or God's not going to give me what I ask. I'm doing something wrong. Start getting down on yourself, dragging in all that negative energy. And suddenly you're like, you can't even pay your bills anymore. You're like, well, I had enough money and then I didn't win the lottery. And now I can't <laughs> because you just pulled in the energy of scarcity. You literally just told the universe, the universe is not punishing you. There's no punishment there. They're not, you literally get to decide if you want scarcity in your life or if you want abundance. That's all they're trying to say. They're like, what do you want? And we're not going to punish you. We're not choosing for you. We're not judging anything that you've decided. If you ask for something and you step away from it once you've asked for it, the answer is always yes. You leave it alone. Wait for it to come in. It's coming. Wait for it. When you're fully ready to receive, it happens. You just have to get into that, no, I'm in receiving mode. Hands off mode. You notice that? I asked, hands off, receiving. <clears throat> Isn't that cool how that works? Just be in receiving. It may not come the way you want it to. It may not come exactly when you think it should. We always, our needs are always met when we allow it. And our wants. We don't necessarily have to just sit around in a cardboard box. <laughs> this house was a miracle that I'm living in right now. Because I finally learned how to get into receiving mode. I don't always do it well. But I do it. I do it. And I do it better and better and better because the more we allow ourselves to ask and hands off and get into receiving mode, the bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger it grows, the better we get at it. We rewire. We have to rewire the ego. The ego likes to hold on. The ego likes to be afraid. The ego likes to continue to work the way it's always worked. It doesn't want change. So every time, do something small. Find something small. Go, I'd really like to have that. And then just back off, hands off. Start with five dollars or ten dollars or whatever you think that you or a, a bike or you know whatever. And then just kind of step back and let it happen. I promise you, it works. It doesn't always work exactly the way that you think it should, and that's the miracle of it. It's like our angels are always directing us to something, you know. And and all we got to do is just be, literally, just step off the plank sometimes these messages this morning keep popping up in front of my face. It's been a very busy morning. So that's all. I'm getting off my soapbox. I don't even have, oh, there it is. It's 10 o'clock. I've moved my room <laughs> around. I can't find my clock. You guys, what, where do we want to go today? We've been talking a lot about music. We've been talking a lot about, I never did share anything today. We've been talking a lot about, um, let's go someplace abundant. Want to do that? You want to go to a place that's so opulent. Opulence. That's That that word came to me a year ago, opulence. And I'm like, I was not living an opulent life. <laughs> Trust me. I was still struggling a lot. But I heard the word opulence. So I know it's coming. It's already here. It's already here. I've already got it. 
I don't need to keep waiting for it. I've already got it. See how you have to change your verbiage? I've already received. If I've asked, I've already received. I only need to stop pushing it away in order to, to let it come into my existence. It's kind of cool. It's more cool now than ever because I feel like the universe is so giving right now and so wanting us to receive. I'm like, just please, please, would you just receive this? Let us give this to you. And we're like, nope. <laughs> Isn't that funny? I'll just share it later. It's okay. All right, we got 15. We got a big grump. Where did the word grump come from? Big group? <laughs> we got a big group. I want to see what else you guys have. And then we're going to go on into a little meditation clearing. A little opulence meditation where we get into the space of let's learn how to receive. That's what they're giving me today. We're going to learn today how to receive. How to stop being that person that's always trying to give. Hmm. How many of you want to join that party? Uh, let's see. <laughs> Lauren, I finally decided to dress in white tights and get over the stereotype of looking like an actual fairy. <laughs> I love your conversation on your clothes today. That's cute. Wendy? Wendy, do you know how many times in the past two years that I have talked to Paul about doing an oracle card deck with Anchor Light? So the fact that you just said that is like, all right, I got to work on that again. We've got tons of pictures. Caleb did so many beautiful pictures while we were in Boston and Salem and all those places. And I did a bunch of pictures. And some of them, the book has both of our pictures in that book. And when I did it, it's really written like an oracle deck. The book is written like an oracle deck. It's not written like a book. When you pull out an oracle deck, you see this beautiful picture. And then you get this, you know, a writing that kind of goes with it every time and sometimes it's like a real pretty creative writing and then you can go deeper into what the purpose of it that book is written with a picture we didn't we didn't put I wish we had we didn't put a picture with every single chapter we did pictures for just about every single chapter so that means that in an oracle deck I don't even really have to write I can I, I actually have more writings I actually did more writings when I was working with Paul and we didn't put them on the book. So there is an oracle deck there. I just had to figure out how to, who to work with to get it put out. This everything costs money. They don't do it for free. <laughs> you can't just say, yeah, I'm going to do an oracle deck. So I got to put it out there to the universe. Like, okay, if you want this oracle deck, you got you to make it happen. So once again, scarcity mode. I will stop myself because of the cost of things. And I got to stop doing that. Lauren, she did it. She did not look like a fairy. Very good. Very good. Wear those tights. Wear what you want. Wear what makes you feel good about yourself. Don't worry about what anybody else. When we're little children, we put on the craziest clothes. And we are, when Abby was little, her name is now Lyron. She's changed it. I have a hard time with my kids changing their names. But when Lyron was little, <laughs> she um, loved Cinderella dresses or any kind of princess dresses. She wore the funny little shoes. And she loved to put them on and go out to the grocery store or wherever she was going because she loved when people noticed her and they would say, you know, she's so cute, that kind of stuff. So, and, and she wasn't embarrassed by it. She didn't care that people said, oh, look at, she's a little fairy or whatever because she was, she loved it. <laughs> so why can't we put ourselves in that? Put on whatever makes you feel good. I have to be comfortable. <laughs> But I do like to feel good. I do like to feel pretty sometimes. I like to wear dresses. I like to be a girly girl. And sometimes, mostly, I just want to wear my blue jeans and a t-shirt and a pair of sneakers. Wear what makes you feel good. When you feel good, you have more confidence. You can sit in front of the camera. Just wear what you want. Don't be uncomfortable. <laughs> just wear what you feel good in. We're sensitive beings. We gotta feel. We got to feel comfortable. And then you can sit there and just let your heart pour out. And those beautiful readings that you do. I love how you sing with your readings, Lauren. It's really beautiful. Uh, let's see. Woohoo! What's the woohoo? <laughs> I must have said something. Oh, about the meditation. You ready for that, Wendy? Julie, that's my problem. I want so bad to get into this fully, but all these rental properties, responsibilities of, of them keep holding me back. Trying to sell them all 
and move on with my new chapter of my new life. That's that's great that you're listening to yourself, Julie. Well, sometimes the best thing we can do is just let go of those old dreams. We let it go. I did it in January. I just said, these dreams aren't working for me. This, this plan that I thought was right is not going to work. And I had said it a number of times before that, and I finally just said it and meant it. And I moved on out of the energy, and the second I got in that car and headed it back east, it was like, I just, it was like falling into a river. Literally, it was like, okay, I give up. Boom, I fell into the river and I just let it take me. <laughs> and it took me directly. Jim and I were just talking about how we met last night. He had just put the sign in the window of this house. When I was in California, I saw myself seeing a house with a sign in the window. And I was like, all right, I'm going to stop looking. I still looked a little bit because I'm very stubborn. <laughs> See, that's where we get out of receiving mode. God said, you're going to find the, the perfect house with a sign in the window. And I'm like, okay, but let me just keep looking a little bit. <laughs> so I got here. The first full day we were here, Abby and I pulled up to this park where we did Steve's memorial service. We, she looks up this little road that's right across from it. She says, Mom, there's a sign in the window in that house. So I drove up, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, it's a storybook cottage. Literally, I'm so, this is like what I would imagine myself living in. And I'm like, surely it's too expensive. It can't be what I, I can't afford that place. There's no way. So I started talking myself down. <laughs> and I started looking around at other places. And the night before, I actually had my daughter call this number because it was so important to me that I couldn't even call him. I said, Jim, and a phone number. And I'm like, something about that. I can't even call the dang phone number. <laughs> And so my daughter called and said, oh, he's so nice, mom, call him. I literally, the night before I signed a lease on another home that really wasn't right for me, it would have been okay, it was cute, it really wasn't right for me. I had a panic attack. My intuition was screaming at me, stop it, what are you doing? And I'm like on the floor meditating, I'm like, what? And they're like, you haven't called in the other house. My spirit guides must want to just smack me upside the head. <laughs> they're like, whop, <laughs> getting your attention, playing with my hair. So sometimes I think they want to just pull my hair right out of my head. So I called him that. I said, all right, I'm going to get a shower. If this, I'll drive over there. I didn't even call him then. I'll drive over. If the sign is still in the window, I'll call. I get in, I get over here. I look. The sign is still in the window. There's a car in the driveway. I'm like, well, it's probably already rented. They just didn't take the sign out. So I almost talked myself out of it again. I'm sitting there. I'm like, I got to call. I got to call. I got to call. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. The little blue car pulls out of the driveway and it heads on by me and I'm like, oh crap, I got to do it. So I call him and he's like, yeah, I'm just in a southern accent. He sounds like Blake Shelton. <laughs> I'm just down the street. I'll come show it to you. I pull up in front of this house. It's snowing. I look out my front window because he wasn't here yet and there's a bright red cardinal sitting in the snow on a tree right in front of me and I'm like, God. So... And that's the rest of the story. The rest of the story is that he and I are engaged <laughs> and I'm living in this house that is my dream house. So I don't mean to go so far into that. Hi, Jasmine. All I'm saying is, Julie, when you say stuff like that is literally you have to let go. You have to let go. You, you know what your dreams are. You know what's in there. Sometimes you just got to let go and let it happen. Just don't try to force the water. Let it happen because that's when everything falls into place so perfectly. You know, like our our higher selves already know what what we need to do. They, it's already it's already in the works. It's not like it's just angels and God and all this out in the clouds someplace. You have that energy within you that knows exactly where you need to be. That knows exactly how to get you there if you would just listen. So, all I'm saying, Jasmine, thank you for popping in. Deborah, yes, I understand how angels look exact. Actually, just as our deceased loved ones don't look as we remember them, but they come to us when we're as, so that we can be familiar exactly, right, Deborah? And the first time I actually saw Steve, I was it was just a few days after he died. I was like, "Will you show yourself to me?" And I closed my eyes and I went to sleep. And just as I went to sleep, this perfect young, like seventeen year, seventeen year old, maybe eighteen, face of a boy with big blue eyes and blonde curly hair and he flashed in front of me I was like that's him only for a split second he showed himself to me so he didn't look anything like he did that like I remembered him he was young and he was youthful and he was healthy and man he was so those blue eyes were exactly his blue eyes so 
I don't know if he did that to comfort me or if he did that because that's actually the form he's taken on there. I don't know. I think they we they can change form for sure. Alyssa, thank you for popping in. What else we got going? Good morning. Sharon Boyle says, If I buy your book from Amazon, please, would you do me the honor of writing me a message that I can stick inside of it? Of course I will, Sharon. I've been doing, I did that for Wendy. I'll, I gotta create some kind of a card or something for you guys to put in there. If I look in my closet, it costs a bit. It's probably the cheapest way for you to get it is Amazon. But if I look in my closet, I may have some more books. But whichever way you want to do it, let me know. James Ingram. Oh, you do, James Ingram. <laughs> I have, I do. I have a brother-in-law. I don't know if you're talking about that, but I have a brother-in-law. My sister's married name is Ingram, and his name is Jim, James. That's why you confused me. Uh, da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da. Yeah, see? Wendy got a signed card. Of course I would send you a signed card. Uh, Melissa, hair is antenna, primarily composed of silica like our modern networking cables. That's a cool thing to think about. It's like our little our little tuning fork. <laughs> um, Sharon, she commented in the crystals too. And you might even talk me into sending a few of these crystals. I got a whole if I go down to this little place downtown, they have these big buckets of dirt that they pulled off the top of mountains someplace. They, they own all this land, and they go in and they scoop up all this dirt, and they bring it in, and you get to go and sieve it out, whatever they call that. Sleuth? Slush? What is it called? <laughs> My daughter loves to do that. So I do that sometimes just because I love it so much, because you get all these really cool surprises in the bucket. And that stuff that you got yesterday, or that you showed, that you posted a picture of, Wendy, that's all just stuff that comes directly out of the mountains here. And it's these great, they're powerful because the energy of these mountains is ancient. And so you get that ancient mountain energy, and it's just beautiful. And I have a ton of them. <laughs> like, they're all over. We, Abby and I just went, and we got a really great bucket. And I already had a ton of them in the other room. And I actually, they do the... They do jewelry there too, so I had an aquamarine made last year from them for my birthday, two years ago. Where are we? I went all the way back, too far back. Who else? Have I missed anybody? John, hi. <laughs> I did miss John. I thought I saw you in passing. Thank you for popping in. I am very Gabby today. Yeah, why don't you just ask for what you want instead of asking for money? That's a good way to do it, Lauren. Ask for exactly what you want, and then... It just, somebody can just gift it to you, can't they? Some people just want money. I don't really ask for money anymore. I make it clear what I need, what, where I am or whatever. I'll be like, okay, well, you know, I'm doing all this work. <laughs> I trust that the universe, God, my angels, whoever you want to talk to, they're taking care of me. And so all I, I just kind of make it clear. <laughs> I just put it out there and then I just let go of it. Not like, very unlike I used to. I used to be, I would stress and fuss and carry on because I had difficulty or I had a bigger bill pop up or something broke down or I'd get all upset and I'd pull in all that negative energy of scarcity and then it just got worse. So truly it's just putting it out there what you need and letting go. Try it. The more you do it, the more your, your brain gets rewired, the more you, you find acceptance in that process. And then there's a lot of things I don't even need. I don't even want a lot of stuff anymore. I've just relaxed into it. I'm like, I got a, I got a sweet little house. I got a car that works great. My bills are paid. I don't really have that much. I don't need a bunch of stuff. It just holds us down, doesn't it? Exactly, Deborah. God ain't gonna give you a winning lottery ticket if you can't handle the amount you got now. That's very true. That's very true. Ask, believe, receive. Practice. It works. Deborah, I don't trust, or maybe I don't believe, so I don't ask. Saying that, I admire all of you. Yeah. It's, um, I think oftentimes we don't realize how available our, our guides, our angels, our, you know, God. <laughs> We don't realize how available they are. We think that we can't ask. We think that they're not really there. We have all these disbeliefs and it's really cool. It's not just money. Please don't think it's just money. It's not just money. I don't even play the lottery anymore. They just kind of would like 
you know, you already won the lottery. What are you worried about? Why do you why do you think you gotta have the lottery? You've already were taking you're so well taken care of. Whenever you have a need, it's always met. You don't need it. It would just be trouble. <laughs> All that money would just be trouble. Anyway. It's everything. Do you need a good night's sleep? Last night I couldn't sleep. I was asking for help. And I got it. Jim couldn't sleep. I was asking for help for him too, and he got it. <laughs> Ask for little things too. Little things. I'm feeling really stressed. I'm feeling kind of scared. Can I get some help with this? Whatever. Whatever it is. It's just, it's not that, it's not what you're asking for. It's the trust and believing that you actually have a team. That archangels are actually available to you. I didn't know it. It's like, they're right here. They're right here in your chest. They're right here in your heart space. They're not coming from the clouds someplace. They're there with you all the time. Your higher self is there with you all the time. Can you just trust in the fact that you have that, you are the boss. You get to tell what you want. You get to ask and then receive. Just know that you're the boss and that you get to create this world, your world, any way that you choose. So if you choose scarcity, that's okay. If you choose abundance, that's great too. If you choose peace, if you choose love, whatever it is that you choose, nobody's judging you. Nobody's judging. If you got jealousy, you got lower vibrational energies around you, nobody's gonna nobody on the other side is saying, Oh my gosh, look at that. They were really making a mess. They're going, Oh, they're just having another experience. <laughs> They've decided to experience jealousy for a while. <laughs> that's all. I'm really harping on it today. I'm sorry. <laughs> I would really like my sacral chakra ball. It's coming soon. Universe will provide it. Yes, trust, trust. The universe wants you doing that work. Why wouldn't the universe provide you something beautiful that you're going to use to make the world even more beautiful, to create this beautiful sound that wakes people up? Of course you're going to receive that ball. Of course. Just be in receiving mode. Charles Magical Mystery Tour. <laughs> that's I believe that's a song too. You guys are away in. I literally was only um, into crazy music like Barry Manilow and the Carpenters and Captain and Tennille and the Osmonds and stuff like that. <laughs> but I'm learning to like this other stuff. Thank you, Wendy, for sharing. I'm not so good at that. I just want to give you guys the, the energy. If I share it everywhere, people are commenting on other pages when it's live and I don't get to them. So I try to stay, stay on enlightened living. That's the draw I've been getting. Julie, always giving good. All right, we're getting there. We're running out of time. So let's go ahead and I'll catch up. Okay, Wendy, thank you. It is written like a book to go with cards. It is. So I all I need, the book. Oh, okay, I hear what you're saying. Thank you for that. Because I'm getting in the push too. All we need is the deck of cards. And it will be sold alongside of the book. The cards, if you... I get it. I don't need to do anything else with the cards. I just create the deck of cards. Thank you, Wendy. And when people buy the book, the deck of cards will go with it. You're awesome. I will do the deck. The universe is going to provide a way to make that happen. <laughs> is it written like a book to go... Okay, got that. What is the title of your book? The book is Anchor Light, An Awakening of Your Greatest Treasure. It's all about awakening you to a deeper relationship with your intuition, with your higher self. Very simply written, the energy of it will work where it's needed. Truly, as you're reading it, the energy opens up parts of you. It's, it's a channeled book. We were given that when Paul and I were working on it. He was like, I see. He saw himself being given some kind of a nautical tool. And he saw me being given a quill, a big feathered quill. It was like a really fancy golden pen with a quill on it. So, and as as soon as I opened up to it, it started flowing out just in the way that it is. It's not perfect. I, when I read it, I'm like, there's a typo. <laughs> but it's okay. It's perfect just exactly the way it is. It's a perfect little baby. It just is, the energy of it is just, those that nitpick it and find, find fault in it aren't doing it the right way. You're just supposed to read it and let it let it speak to your heart your heart. Let it speak to your soul. <clears throat> Deborah, and it is on it is on Amazon. I think it's probably still in Barnes and Noble too. It's like Wendy's already answered you. Woohoo! 
Thank you guys for answering all those questions for me. All right. Lauren, I get it. I get the society can push a lot of things at you. We got to step out of society and just be us. Be true to you. What do you love? What do you want to wear? What do you want to do? Be true to your own self. Because you are going to reach out to people that other people aren't going to... Like, who you are is so important to be just exactly you because people will be drawn to you for being you. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Scarlet, I love wearing men's underpants, okay? We're getting kind of personal now, but that's okay. <laughs> you can't make everybody happy exactly, Deborah. Okay, yes to the Oracle deck. I got it, I got it, we'll do it. I'm also starting, because of this, what we were talking at the beginning, this big project, I'm also starting a website that's going to have MP4s. It'll have meditations available to you. I'm going to just do the meditation, not sit and gab, and I'm going to put it on mp4s and you can order and have it yourself so that you can listen to the meditations or the clearing sessions anytime you like <clears throat> without all this other stuff there's lots of stuff coming down the pike thank you Wendy lots of answers to my questions because as we do this school it'll have a store and these will be things the, the oracle deck will be in the store I can't find my comfy trousers <laughs> guys are funny we're running out of time and you're so talkative we don't really run out of time i just let it go it's like there's a all divine timing right i do have a class at, at 11 o'clock so i can't stay too long deborah my husband who passed met through a singles ad we both had disabled children which isn't easy when you're single and dating so we felt so blessed to meet someone else who understood each other that's beautiful that's what was going on with me and Steve too. I had six when I when I separated from my first, and he had three, and together we were quite a tribe. But but he was such a good dad. <clears throat> All right, you're welcome, Sharon. Yes, I could send it in an email. It can be well. You know what? I could do that if you want me to, Sharon. If you want it in actual ink, I'll do a card. If you want me to, I can create a file that's actually in my handwriting. Um, my phone, I've got a, a, a note, so I can actually write you a note in my handwriting, and I can send it to you that way too, and you can just print it if you want to and stick it in your book. That would cut back on all the trying to ship stuff all over the place. So let me know. And that way, anybody, anybody that's got Anchor Light that wants to have a message inside their book, I'm more than happy to do that. I'm not sure where the hair thing... Oh, you like to have your hair down mostly. you got gorgeous hair, Sharon. I've noticed your hair. It's so beautiful. Sign card for my book. It should be here today. Oh, your book is here today. All right, Charles. You guys keep me honest on that. You're going to have to remind me who who needs uh, some... And let me know if you have a way to print it, and I'll just do the... I'll either email it to you, or I will somehow get it to you a note that you can print and then you can have it right away and it'll be completely personalized I never just send two words I will always send you a whole whatever some kind of little something whatever I'm feeling at the moment yes I say the universe will take care of my bills and spending and that everything I need for spiritual growth and sound healing business will be provided exactly Sharon give it to the angels mm -hmm. excellent Deborah yeah, the same thing with the judging. There are all ways that the ego is is wired, and we have to rewire the ego. After a while, you just when you work with yourself, you like it's it doesn't. Everybody's gonna let go of trying to con control that. It all comes down to control. <clears throat> Everybody around you is gonna think what they're gonna think. They're gonna do what they're gonna do. They're gonna say what they're gonna say, and you can't control it. Nothing you do can control what that person is thinking or feeling. They are in their own place. They've got their own filters they're gonna do it and if you think you can control them you'll drive yourself crazy you gotta be you you when you let go of the energy of trying to control what other people think or or say about you you suddenly find that people actually think and say nicer things about you because you've let go of control they feel that they're like oh energetically it changes things energy is so important energy is the new currency so when we talk about receiving being in receiving mode you can receive energy right here, right now. Energetically, you receive abundance. And when you energetically accept abundance in your life, 
then abundance comes in whatever way it chooses. You don't have to try to figure out how it's going to come. You just, energy is the currency. Get it, get it into you. So by creating healthy energy between you, borders, or whatever, you know, like sometimes you have to put up these little, you got somebody that's being hateful, they can't seem to pull out of that negative energy. Well, just let them go. Step away from them. You can still love them. Let them go with love. But hold yourself in that higher vibration and you will attract people that are also in the same vibration as you and suddenly life is going to get so good for you. So remember before we think about, that's why people that talk about how to how to manifest lottery winnings and stuff like that, I'm like, I don't get into it. I don't want to tell the universe how to provide for me. That puts a wall up. And that makes me have to get into my head and figure, try to figure it. Once I get into my head, I'm out of the mode. I have to be just easy and just know. <laughs> yes, I'd like to have this. Okay. Sometimes it'll come to me. The other, a couple weeks ago, I, I just heard new car. I'm like, okay. Uh, all right. I'm waiting. I'm, it's coming. I don't know how. I know I'm going to have this property here. This this house is already mine. That property there, that property there, that property there are all going to come up for sale. I know it. And we're going to own every one of them. <laughs> I'm going to own this whole... When I first moved here, I got that the, this energy blast. It was like, no, this was this was sacred land once, Native Americans, and so we wanna we wanna recreate something here. And so you're gonna be, we're gonna put you right here. So there's something big coming about with this land that I'm on. I don't need to know how it's gonna happen. I just need to step back out of the way. I don't know when it's gonna happen. I'm just sitting here where I was placed and trusting. So that's my story. That's how it's done, as far as I can understand. Is that energetically, I know these are going to be mine. These are mine. Let me change my verbiage. These are mine. This is mine. When I walk out in the woods, it's mine. It's mine. <laughs> I, I I respect it. I love it because it's. I I feel responsible for it. Like it's my job to clean it up. That's it. Deborah, it took me a while to not argue when I felt I was being judged, but I realized that it's my bipolar, so I forced myself to just shut up and let let her ride make me feel better. Made me feel exactly. I wrote for some of those books are coming back. The one <clears throat> the one book that's professionally published is Anchor Light. I have a couple other books on um, if you search my name, but Beautiful Breadcrumbs was the story of Steve that I had to get out of my system. And it's changed. It, it needs to come back to me. I almost sent it to a professional publisher, but I need to take the time to pull it back because the story is still unfolding. It's not done yet. So <clears throat> one of those books was Caleb's book that's still with a publisher that he's working on. I helped him to write that. And one of those books is literally just love notes from Steve. It's just his wisdom in that book. It's called Love Steve, and it's just love notes from him. It's just my little writings as I was, you know, coming through grief and healing he would give me these messages and I put them in Love Steve. So you can get those through KDP if you're interested in any of that stuff. It's very simple writings. So they're not professionally published. Just my stuff that I put out there for people that wanted it. <clears throat> Can't fix stupid. <laughs> yeah. It's true. Some people are just stuck where they are and you can't fix it and it's not your job to fix it. But you can step away from it. All right. Okay, you guys have stopped talking. Good. <laughs> it's really late. we got a very short time, and we're going to go ahead and do probably still a 15-minute meditation for you guys. Okay, so if you're ready for it, let's get comfy. I love that you're so active in all these comments. You guys have been so busy today. It's just kept me occupied. I love that. I'd like you to start to center and ground your energy for a few minutes. I'd like you to take a big breath and put your feet on the floor if you can. My feet are always bare when I do this, so I can draw that beautiful earth energy in through my feet. I'd like you to start to breathe easy for a second. Can you hear that little dingle bell? Are you noticing a different sound in the room? How about if we do this? How about if you guys that, that keep most... I, I always close my eyes when I'm meditating often. Sometimes I peek out. Now I can still stay in there. I've practiced enough. But if you need a... a a visual today. I have a beautiful visual straight from Wendy. I'm going to turn it off of me for a second. Just listen. We're going to go into abundance mode, okay? And abundance 
the way that it was given to me, I'm going to show you a trick in this meditation. And so here is your little visual. See if I can get it set up just right for you. Hold on, I hope you don't get dizzy. Come on, little come on, little gooseneck. Do what I want you to do. Close enough. There it goes. Okay. If, not, if you're not dizzy yet, that's as close as I can get. So, as we're sitting here watching these little butterflies, I would like you to imagine one thing. One thing that you can focus on that is plentiful, that's abundant. It does not involve finances. It involves anything. And I want to I want to go into a meditation that I was given straight from the Spirit one day, and we're going to go into that. I want you to see how this works. All right. So take a big breath. And I want you to envision yourself. Let's count down from 10 so that we can go a little bit deeper into this meditation. 10. Breathe. 9. Breathe. 8. 7. 6. 5. 4. Three, two, one. Be easy, breathe easy. So we're, we're standing at the edge of a dried up pond. If we look down at our feet, we see the earth cracking under our feet. It's all dried up, the animals are gone, the trees are all withered. It's kind of a sad place to be. And yet, we can change this. We suddenly realize that it doesn't have to be this way. We can change it. We are powerful. And so as we together envision water coming up through those cracks in the earth, it's clear and it's cool and it's comforting and it's coming up very nice and easy. And as we stand there, that water is lifting us up off the ground. And it's slowly filling that beautiful lake. Watch it as it transforms. This abundance of water. There's animals in the water. Suddenly we see fish swimming alongside of us, underneath us in the water. If you peek your face down in the water, you can see all kinds of wildlife coming back. I see geese flying overhead, ducks floating on the water, there's baby ducks. And so I start to swim. And maybe I haven't been feeling real energetic lately and, I, and I'm kind of tired. And yet in this place of abundance, I have all kinds of energy. All of a sudden I can swim as far as I want to swim. And it feels so good to spread my arms over my head to let that water just hold me up. It's so buoyant and comforting. And I'm swimming and stretching my body and it feels so good. And I see a little inlet, a little place that where, where it curves in a little bit. And in that little space, there's willow trees. Can you see them? And those willow trees are now green and lush. And the branches are hanging low over the water. Let's go explore that for a second. Take a swim over to that willow tree. As we get close to it, we get up underneath all of those branches and it's shady there. It's like a little hiding place. It's like our own little cave. How fun is that? Let's splash you a little bit. This water feels good. Let's splash a little. Have some fun with it. Kick it around. Enjoy it. Laugh. Guess what I see? I see a swing. Who would like to swing out over the water and jump? Let yourself play for a few minutes. Everything is green and it's so beautiful here now. We have created an abundance of water, an abundance of health, an abundance of fun, an abundance of energy within ourselves. I hear you laughing as you climb up to that rope swing. 
swing out over the water. Uh-oh, Wendy just did a big belly flop and everyone's laughing and she's laughing. It felt good. It was fun. Sharon Boyle. Wow, Sharon Boyle's swinging up as high as she can go. I see her going. All of you, Deborah, all of you that are here still. <clears throat> Alyssa, finding things that, to do on that pond. <clears throat> There's a little canoe at the side of the water if anyone wants to take a ride. And two of you have climbed in the canoe. Charlie, Charlie's out riding in that canoe. He's having fun. If you're hungry at all, I see some fruit hanging from one of the trees. You can go grab one and take a big bite. It's sweet, just like a, the sweetest apple you've ever tasted. All the juice just sprays out of you, makes you all sticky. Yum, tastes so good. Look out around you as you're playing. Look out at what you've created. This place that was so barren and sad is now filled with life. I see birds flying in the sky. I see a few little rabbits down under the trees. I see some squirrels hopping around, stealing the rabbits' nuts. <laughs> Everything around us, there's fields of green around the lake. The sun is shining down. The skies are so blue and there's puffy clouds and maybe a couple rainbows and butterflies. Look at those butterflies. We can see them in our visual. They're just flying and flying. They flutter. Butterflies don't even fly. I don't think they just flutter. They just seem to be going who knows where. In and out and up and down and all around. They flutter around you. There's so many butterflies and they're in every color of the rainbow. So as we enjoy that water, let's do a quick clearing of your physical self, your emotional self, your ego. And we're asking Archangel Michael, who has brought in a beautiful wall of protection for each of us now to come in. He's going to sever any cords or attachments, any lower vibrational energy, anything that is holding you solidly to the earth and making you feel heavy and unclear scarcity coming in I see there, scarcity, scarcity going out clarity coming in Archangel Gabriel is coming in to bring more clarity Archangel Raphael for healing so allow your body source energy right energy straight from the source is, is flowing through you you are made of this energy allow it to just flow easily through your body your body understands this You've been filled with source ever since you were born. It's always been there. This is not different. Just allow it to flow in through your crown. I'm feeling heat on the top of my head. And down into the third eye, across the forehead. Ah, beautiful energy. We're perfectly centered right now, each one of us in the same space. Can you feel your Holy Spirit higher self coming into the space? As your ego has stepped aside, the truth of who you are has stepped into the room. And there's so much love and understanding and forgiveness and empathy, wisdom, being filled with wisdom right now. It's flowing easily into you. Ego is receiving answers. The energy is beginning to flow down into the throat. Stretch that throat out. You can be yawning. Just allow that energy to move clearly into your throat space. Clearing away all of those questions. It's filling that space with answers. It's allowing you to see your truth and encouraging you to speak your truth. Filling your vocal cords with the energy of the angels. Down into the heart space. Beautiful. Fill up your heart. Take a big breath. Expand it and then expand it just a little bit more. Push some of that energy back into that behind your heart, that beautiful space where you have a well to hold energy that you get to share out with the world. You're so filled with it right now. So collect it up. 
as if you're going around collecting up crystals right now. Push that all of that treasure that you found back into you, your cave, that cave behind your heart. Fill it right up. Don't worry about it. There's more than enough to go around. You can take as much as you like. Moving down into the solar plexus, I see little glittery caves. I see all of these beautiful crystals that you've collected. It's filling that space. The sun is shining in there and it's allowing for all of the little rainbows, the prisms of light. It's shining on each of us. Your light is shining so brightly right now. Thank you for sharing. It's moving down into the second, clearing away old clutter severing, removing any cords or attachments, any earthbound spirits, anything that's there that is draining your energy, that is no longer for your highest of good, we allow those cords, those soul contracts, the old karma, sever, release, let it go, let it go. It's time to let go of all that old stuff. Down into the root. Beautiful energy. I hope you're enjoying your little time at the lake too. Keep, keep having fun over there while this clearing is going on. The energy is moving down the legs, down into the feet, and I hear roots going out your feet, right through the centers, down into the earth. The earth is cracking and moving away, making space as you're perfectly planted to this earth as you're given roots so that you can feel at home, feel settled, abundant. Abundant energy flows from the earth, from the earth's core, right back up your roots. An abundance of energy, your bank is being filled. It's filled as high as it can go. All of this abundance energy right now is all yours for the taking. The most, as you, as you open up, as you create space, it fills in all those spaces. There's no room for scarcity now. It's been taken up by abundance. Feel yourself. Take a big breath. And as you breathe that in, we're going to allow that abundance that you've just created to go out all the way around the earth. That the earth, that the inhabitants of the earth would realize that there is more than enough to go around. We can let go of scarcity now as a human race. Scarcity can go away. We're envisioning it all around abundance, just filling up every cup. Abundance of health, abundance of resources, abundance of a strong planet to live on, an abundance of love for each person, for each animal, for each blade of grass, every part of this. Envision it, this green light going all the way around the earth. right through your crown. Can you feel all that beautiful energy shooting right out of you right now? Because you're so abundant, so filled with love. Thank you for sharing. I see diamonds showering down on each one of us. And now that you're all clear, that you're all centered and grounded, I'd like you to pull that little person that's been out swimming at the lake. Call them back in. They've had so much fun. They can go back to that lake anytime they like. You have created a beautiful space to go back and visit anytime you like. Come on back in now. Come back into your heart space. And as you do, it's all cozy and comfy there. We ask Archangel Michael to, to wrap each one of us in a beautiful bubble of protection today. You can see out. People can see in. They can see your beautiful light. And yet as they do that, there is no chance that any negative energy is going to enter there. Only, only love. You are safe and protected within that space. Now I'd like you to count back up to ten with me as you come back into the room. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Excellent. 
Start wiggling your toes, start wiggling your fingers, start bringing yourself back into an awareness. Allow yourself to come back into the room. How was that? <sighs> nice and peaceful energy today. Very good, Deborah. She has an abundance of love, just letting it explode out everywhere. Seeing my truth is knowing I was born with a beautiful gift that through childhood I was forced to keep hidden, but no more. I'm free to be me. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. <laughs> it's exactly the message. Don't hide your gifts anymore. Let yourself shine. Fishing pole swimming, fishing. Caught a big catfish. Very good. Thank you, Deborah, for saying that. That mobile is beautiful. She did a beautiful job. And the fact that I was like, where am I going to put it? And I, I was like, well, that's where I'm going to put it. And, the, and I was like, what if it ties up in knots? It doesn't. It just flows so beautifully. Wendy, it's a, it's a perfect gift. Thank you so much. Butterflies are my thing from Steve. So when you sent that, it's like, ah, it touches me so much. All right, you guys, I love all these comments. I'll catch back up to you in just a little bit. I got a class to teach at, in 10 minutes. <laughs> I gotta get going. I love you guys. We went really late today. Please take good care of yourselves. We'll be back here. I'll be back tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, 9.30. I'll be back at 9.30, and we'll do this again. Wendy saw black stallion and diamonds and lily of the valley. How beautiful. Julie, I'm so glad. That's what Source gave me that a couple of years ago to teach me how to get out, how to get out of scarcity mode. So practice that. Find something, anything that can help you to see an abundance and put yourself there and be calm in that space and feel what it feels like to have as much as you can possibly imagine. And the more you do that, the more you rewire the brain. That's the best way. We can talk all day about abundance, but put yourself there and allow your ego to just feel what it feels like. It's always in the feeling that we change the ego. Take good care. I will see you guys shortly tomorrow. Oh, 7 o'clock tonight. 7 o'clock tonight. Forever after that. Eastern Standard Time. Discussion afterwards. If you're interested in being here with um, my animal communicator, Aaron Robin Robertson and um, um, Sharon Ria. We're going to have a discussion on current events that are going on in the world. So if you're interested in that, be here at 7 o'clock tonight. I love you guys. I'll see you soon. Later coffee time. Yes, Sharon. We'll see you soon. Love you. Bye.